We're looking uh, to recall area rules for 2D shapes. Here are a bunch of our 2D shapes we have dealt with before, so we're going to go through these quite quickly. The area, remember, let's talk about what area actually is. It is the space inside an enclosed 2D shape. That's what we're working with here. We're finding, say, the shaded area on this square. So an area of a square is going to, we're going to have to identify the size, remembering that all of the sides are the same length. So our area is side times side or side, uh, side squared. A rectangle, we have dimensions length and dimensions of the width. Our area is going to be our length multiplied by our width. These are hopefully quite familiar to you so far. And our triangle, the information we have is our B for base and H for perpendicular height. This is the height that runs at a right angle to the base. So our area for this one is going to base times height divided by two. And I imagine in your younger years, you would have seen how all of these rules have come about. This is a parallelogram and our area relies on us knowing the B for base and again, H for perpendicular height. So it runs at a right angle to the base. Our area here is base times height. Our trapezoid, I'm going to cross that out and write trapezium. That is how we usually see them. We have some other information here. We usually call this top side A and this bottom B for base. And the H is our perpendicular height that runs right angles to the base again. This time our area is the top side plus the base multiplied by the height and all of that is divided by two. So you might like to put brackets around that part as well. Our rhombus, our rhombus has some interesting features. Our D's stand for diagonal. So if D1 runs this way and D2 is that way, D for diagonal. These diagonals bisect each other at right angles. And our area of our rhombus are those diagonals. Diagonal one times diagonal two divided by two in total. All right, our circles, our feature on our circle is R for radius and it runs from that center out to the edge and it will be the exact same length all the way around. Our area for our circle equals pi times r squared or pi r squared, it is the radius squared multiplied by pi. And if we are looking at a sector of a circle, we would still have to consider using the pi r square rule for an entire full circle, but we need to consider how many degrees of that full circle we actually have. Now we know this right angle shows us we've got 90 degrees and that's actually a quarter of the circle. But if we don't know how many degrees we've got, we have to say theta, so the number of degrees in that sector divided by the total possible 360. And we multiply that by our pi r squared. So there's our rules really quickly run through.